We're back with uh, Skittles. I can't leave her this barrel for that long without just her life being confined to a stall. We decided to call her Skittles. I don't know how we ended up on that name, but there we are. And uh, she's gotten much better about coming up and uh, getting pet on and that sort of thing. But she's still holding on to uh, not wanting us to touch her legs. And I really didn't want to get her front feet trimmed. The problem is, because we've had to keep them in stalls, because we won't be able to catch them if we turn them out into a bigger pen, we haven't been able to move her feet much. And so she's at the point where um, I really think she needs to some yielding, and then that will allow us to release her to petting her. So right now, if you just try to touch her leg, you'll see um, she, she doesn't like it. You know, we've spent a good amount of time attempting that of just going slow and being patient. You know, and what she'll actually do is if you keep, you know, it'll just escalate if you keep, if you keep kind of, kind of sticking with it. And she'll actually try to kick it with her hind feet, which is interesting. And then what I'm going to do today is I have a little tiny round pen just outside that door that I can go into to kind of ask for her for a little bit more yielding. So we're going to kind of see how that goes. And uh, once we got the halter on her, um, because that was so difficult to get the halter on her, I decided to go ahead and leave leave the halter on her. And now it's attached with a zip tie, so if she if it got hung up on something, it would break. But the problem is, until we got her gentle enough to halter her and unhalter her, um, if I end up having to put a rope on her or do something like that, that's just kind of scaring her every time. So it's a little trick I learned from Mustangs is just leave a halter on, but put it on with a zip tie. That way it's like, and it hasn't broken at all. It stayed there the whole time. Hasn't been an issue. Now I can come up and put my lead rope on and now. Now she kind of thinks we, we got her here. And uh, again, you can see she's kind of gotten better at petting. For, for me, she's holding on to some things and it's because she doesn't see us as the leader. She's, she's tolerating us more and more, but I don't think she sees us as the leader yet. Um, and so that's the big thing that we're gonna try to accomplish today is by asking her to move her feet a little bit and that should let us progress. That's a girl. Okay, so we got her outside here, and now we're gonna do some yields. So I'm gonna ask her to move her feet a little bit. I'm gonna be yielding her mostly off the halter, but I will reinforce with the stick a little bit if I need to. Again, I'm just trying to get her to kind of understand that I'm the one who's uh, driving her here a little bit. Very good. There's a lick and chew. And then what I'll try to do is each time, try to just release her uh, to being pet. Good. I'm just trying to build a little bit of a language here. It's like, it's like, can I ask you to move? Just controlling her feet a little bit. It doesn't take much for her to get kind of locked up. She just, she's not understanding it, and she's just looking for ways to go, well, if I don't want this to happen right now, could I, you know, find different ways to have this stop? What she isn't trying is just accepting it. And there she's trying to accept it, so we'll just soften there and get quieter. But she's kind of a good example that if you never push the boundaries, if, you, if, if you're trying to train a horse without ever bothering them and upsetting them, they're gonna, you're going to get hit a plateau with certain horses. Some horses are easy and basically anybody's training program would work. And then some horses are just a higher level prey animal, and that's her, you know, she's just, she's just a better prey animal than some of the easy ones. You know, the easy ones are just not, as, not very good prey animals, you know. They're too trusting, you know, of a predator. They're too easy. Um, they're too willing to put themselves, you know, kind of, kind of in a, a dangerous situation.
Hey, if you guys are enjoying this video, I know you're gonna love my Patreon page. We post a new video there every week. I answer your horsemanship questions. We offer video coaching and even do a monthly giveaway. Go check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below. Can't wait to see you there. But the, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, this is a big deal. Like we have to be able to do vet work on her. I have to be able to trim her feet. I have to be able to catch her. I have to be able to help her if she, you know, understand fencing and that sort of thing. And so it's like, I can't, I can't leave her uh, this feral for that long without just her life being confined to a stall. Um, even then there's going to be problems with the feet coming up um, and other things. So she, she has to get gentle and tame. So we kind of have to work through this and we're trying to give her as you know, all the best options in the world here um, to get okay with it. And you can see when I am willing to push through some of those initial reactions, you know, uh, she comes through it. Okay. See there, she's trying to be curious about it. She doesn't like it, but she's trying to be curious about it. And it's interesting is she's more left brain than she is right brained, uh, which is, uh, she's just an interesting horse. Um, and she's probably going to end up making a really good horse, but we got to get, we got to get through this in the right way. Um, so I'm very happy with how that ended up turning out. Now look at after, after going through the rope, uh, being circled around her legs, see how now she's okay with me petting it oh, on the other side. Anyway, see, that's way better. She's not sweaty. She's looking around. She just has some like big reactions, but it's just a, she's a, she's an interesting combination. She's interesting because she's pretty left brain is what I'm saying. And that's unusual for a left brain horse to have such significant reactions to things. But I feel like this made a big, big difference for her. You know, she hasn't turned loose yet. <laughs> Anybody want to trim her feet? Now, I would like to get her used to this with the stick and string because it kind of comes off and goes back on. If I can't get her used to the stick and string, I have to put a rope on her hind legs. But you see, she tries to, she likes to out position me. Um, she'll, she'll push her head into you and kind of get you to go where she wants you to go. I like that, she's getting curious about the stick. Much better. Super. That's some big progress today. Again, touch the legs after the string. Much better. And uh, we just hit those thresholds, and she just is like, nope, I'm not going to accept anything more than that. But you can see by me coming in here and challenging the process today and uh, doing asking her for some harder things, it kind of signed her up, and she kind of had to get more committed, you know, so again, you don't want to camp out on one thing. You want to kind of move around and flow in between different yields. Left brain horses have a harder time turning loose to who is the leader. doesn't mean they're not afraid of a predator, but they're having a hard time turning loose to that. Right brain horses are more willing to move their feet around, um, but they're maybe a little more, less likely to want to accept something from a confidence standpoint. Um, and that's why she's an interesting combination because I actually think she's quite left brained, um, even though it light of her behavior seem right brain. It's like, well, it's hard to touch her and that sort of thing. Um, but really it's more of her just saying no versus I can't. And, uh, she, th this isn't as common It's more, you, I can't are more, I com more common than I won't. <laughs> She's a curious, curious horse, you know, and then she goes right back to wanting scratches after, you know, after all that, you know, so she's, she's going to be a fun one. I'm really going to like her. Um, but we just had to get past some of these little hurdles. So I think we're off to a good start with her and uh, we're gonna keep it going. All right, so it's been a couple sessions since you guys saw uh, me and Skittles <laughs> ago. And um, we've, we, uh, this is our second time now leading her down uh, to the indoor arena. I wasn't able to film every, everything we did with her, um, but you guys are kind of just behind maybe a couple of sessions. And um, so where we're at now is I'm working on her picking up her feet is kind of the main thing. But we're just peppering in some yields, so I don't like to just jump right into um, a bunch of yields. Um, one of the things that was a really big deal for her is finally getting to where we can throw the stick and string over her, and that allowed me to start touching her legs kind of everywhere. And um, this is paving the way for me to be able to put the, um, a rope, uh, another rope around her leg and uh, teaching her to follow a feel there. So that's kind of where we're at um, today. She had a lot of brace about the halter. Um, and so 
um, just working on her following a feel here and having her first response be to step forward and just getting, being able to lead her all the way down here has been a big deal because that, that just, you get to spend a little more time with that horse following you around at that point. And then the next yield that was really um, important for her um, is, is kind of just softening to the halter in general. And so one of the things I would do is I would just start at the base of her neck here and just kind of ask her to lower her head. There we go. And then one of the things I still try to not do is just go straight for her legs. Um, I try to like prepare the way for that, okay? So one of the ways is, you know, the string wrapping around her legs, the lead rope wrapping around her legs. And uh, our, uh, we're, we have another little guy down here with us. This is Showtime. And uh, he's got blue eyes. And he's got a lot of pink around his eyes, so we got the fly mask on him. Um, but he's down here too, so cameraman's got to deal with that right now. So the next thing that I wanted to work on with her was, it, this is what a lot of people don't realize too, is when you're training horses, you have to balance confidence with yields, okay? You can't just go confidence, 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 because sometimes they hit a threshold, um, and like her, for example, you know, when we were giving her feed at this age, she was already starting to like pin her ears, you know, when you go to feed her, so you got to be able to drive her off of that, you know, things like that, and that's just kind of common um, young horse stuff. Um, but one of the things that we needed to do was be able to ask her to uh, step off kind of in a little circle here. So this was just the baby steps of uh, teaching them to circle. Good. So I like that. And what this does is it allows me to release her to handling her legs. And we'll see if she'll just maintain, like, see there, uh, she stayed at a trot. That's all I'm expecting, you know. I don't want to bring them down here and just do like a whole bunch of lunging and that sort of thing. And I just do little short sessions with everything. So it's like that, and now I'll rotate to like, let's say, handling a foot. So we'll just take this lead rope here, see if we can wrap the rope around. You know, when I, the, I, this is, I've now done this a couple of times with her, but the first time I did this, um, it's like you use a little bit of the halter here and ask them to step. And then while they're stepping, <laughs> then you're going to ask them to put a feel. So I'm trying to avoid just pulling on the, the foot rope here. There we go. And so you just take the step that they're kind of trying to offer you from following a feel off the halter and then just adding that to it. Add that to it. Ask for a little more. Then the next stage here is I'll just see if I can just get her to pick up her foot like that. Just unload it. And so once they're kind of okay with picking the rope up here, then I try to hand it to my, hand it off to my hand, and then this is a little bit more comfortable, and this is where I can start kind of getting them ready for trimming her feet and the ferry, that sort of thing. What I, I try not to do is hold it too long, and I also try to move it a little bit. Um, I don't try to like hold on to it, it's more of I'm cupping it. So I just kind of like to just move it around, put it down, pick it back up, and, and build how long they can tolerate their foot being held onto for. And again, whatever you do on one side, you gotta do on the other side. So you gotta make sure both sides are even here. And again, a big part of what, how I got to this point was not just by doing this step. It was by actually circling her and moving her around. And when she turned loose to me controlling her, her feet, that made a huge difference in her seeing me as the leader. And then she could get along with this and get more comfortable with this part of it too. So the, the point that I'd like to make is that a lot of horses they need you to, uh, not most horses need you to really balance that, the yielding and the confidence. It, you know, it's a lot of times people only really focus on making sure they're not scaring them and building confidence with all these new things that we're exposing them to. But they also have to turn loose to us controlling their feet. It's in their nature to care of who's in charge, who's the alpha horse. You know, that's a really important thing for, for horses to, to understand. Oh, I like that. So she kind of prepared her foot for that. That was really nice. Yeah, we'll do it again. There we go. Love it. You know, one of the things we're starting to do now too is when we put a halter on her um, to get her wanting to get caught more and more. She's not bad at getting caught, but I want her to want to get caught more. And so, because a lot of this stuff down here can be a little bit stressful for them. So what we do is we put a halter on her, take her out and let her graze, let her eat grass. Because there's, she's in a small dry lot right now where there's no grass, there's plenty of hay, but they really love that fresh spring grass. So we'll just let them graze there for 10 to 15 minutes and um, then come on and lead them down here for a little bit of a training session. So one of the things I like to do with them is I'll, I got this ring rope here and, um, and I'll just kind of get them used to it, you know? So right here, when she's scared of it, that's where it's, it's kind of human nature as you go, oh, it's scaring her back off. You gotta keep going with it there until she gets comfortable. Now right here, she's comfortable. 
Now I can retreat with it. And that's kind of against our nature a little bit. Some people might try to make them stand still, but you know, if they get scared of it, you go like, oh, I scared them. But that's the idea is I'm trying to get her exposed to things moving around her a little bit quicker. So you can't really just, um, you know, you can, you can get going where you're too slow with them and it ends up being a little too sneaky. And then um, anything you do can kind of end up surprising them. So I like them before I try to pick up a hind foot is to just wear this butt rope a little bit. And I don't, I don't need her to yield to it or anything. It's just about her confidence, just kind of wearing it and getting comfortable with that rope, kind of touching her hind feet, you know, and then I can put a little feel on it if I want. For me, I'm using this to prepare her for things touching those hind legs. You can see she's okay with that. So now I can proceed to the next, the next level. <laughs> now see there, I reached a little bit too quick. <clears throat> okay, so she's a little worried, so I gotta stick with it here. There's no relief for her getting worried. There we go. There's a lick and chew. The next thing I'm gonna do is put it up high. I want it high above her hock there. And the reason I have it up high is you kind of have to expect them to think about kicking a little bit. And so now I'm doing the exact same thing I did with the front foot. I'm gonna try to lead her and then just put a little feel on that rope as she takes a step. Little feel. And then now, for me, the next stage is I try to uh, get them to unload the foot. Just, again, same process as the front feet. The only difference is this time what I try to do is I try to bring it forward to my hand here. And I start off by building their confidence with me um, kind of holding their hoof here and then just petting this leg and just letting that feel good to them to have it in the air and then putting it back down. And once that's kind of going pretty good, then I can start to get comfortable reaching down here with my hand and asking that foot to come forward. So after doing some yielding, then I like to introduce them to a little bit of obstacles here. And just, this is not about doing anything at this point. This is just about seeing if you can bring out some of their natural curiosity of what things are. So I kind of roll this ball away from them here. And then as they get closer to it, I'll kind of stop rolling it and just see if they want to, see if they want to play with it or be curious. <laughs> There we go. Nice. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching Skittles' training process. And uh, we had a lot of fun doing it. She's, she's a pretty cool little filly. And what we're gonna do now is she's gotta get a little better with her feet so that we can trim her feet whenever we need to. A little bit easier to halt her and trailer load. And uh, once we've accomplished that, that's probably another five sessions from now. Um, then she's gonna get turned out with other horses in a big field and let her play and, and uh, just grow up and just be a horse for a while. And basically she'll just get handled a few days before the farrier comes to trim her feet again. You can kind of keep you guys posted on her journey. So thank you guys for watching. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do that now and we'll see you on the next one.